Hello, Empowered Woman. Welcome to this episode of the Empowered Woman podcast. On this episode, I'll be talking more about speaking. Is one of your goals for your business to become a speaker? Or if you have already started speaking, do you want to take it up a notch? I just wrapped up my first ever workshop called TEDx 101, helping ladies understand the process to finally get on the TEDx stage and also shared some valuable insight on growing your brand and your business through speaking. Of course, I encourage you to check out the replay of the workshop. The link is in the show notes but I'll share an overview here on the show today, as well as a can't miss offer called TEDx Intensive. Let's dive in. Welcome back to the Empowered Woman Podcast, the number one show on personal growth, visibility, and profit for women entrepreneurs. If you're wanting to start believing in yourself, giving yourself permission to succeed, and let your voice be heard to make an impact in the world as an entrepreneur, this is the place for you. I am so glad that you're here. My name is Marcia Spurk, and I'm your host, triplet mom, woman empowerment coach, and all things motivation extraordinaire. Welcome again, and let's dive into today's episode. You should know by now, I love running experiments. Every time I come out with a new offer, I try something a little bit different. Um, I play around with different ideas, and it's been a long uh, journey of really understanding how to work with my intuition and uh, listening to my audience. And I knew I wanted to do a workshop on TEDx. In fact, a couple months ago, when I did my very first Reels workshop, I decided I was going to be running workshops monthly or maybe every other month on different things that I can help people with and kind of feel it out and see which one I get the most response for and obviously overwhelming response with the Reels, so much so that I went ran two workshops on Reels, one specifically on the step-by-step and another one, how to incorporate Reels into your marketing content and creating content. If any of this sounds interesting to you, I will put the link to both in the show notes and you can watch the replay. People are still buying the replay uh, from that and it's going to be an evergreen thing. I'm actually already planning my Black Friday sale. Oh my gosh, where's time going, right? Uh, Planning my Black Friday sale and creating probably a bundle of all the workshops that I have been teaching. I want to do one helping you pitch to be on TV, all the things. Anyway, so for this uh, TEDx one, I decided that I wanted to increase the rate because obviously I had had great uh, turnout for my 37 rate. So here's some behind the scenes. I love chronicling my journey as a business owner. I feel like this helps a lot. Other people out there that are building their business and deciding on prices and rates and all the things. So I knew for an hour and a half of just sitting, listening to the wisdom and the knowledge I've gained in the last six years it's worth, it's worth a few more dollars. So I wanted to increase the rate, uh, but I wanted to give a chance to people that were really interested and really create that anticipation. I'm a big fan of let's build anticipation so that not only you get yeses before you even make the offer, but that people have enough time to hear about your offer and then make up their mind. And that's one of the reasons why I don't really necessarily like flash 24 hour sales. I, in my experience, it's not enough time for people to make up their minds. People are busy, they're overwhelmed, they may miss it out and then you missed on the sale, right? And then the opportunity to help somebody. So what I decided to do was, I'm going to tell people that I'm going to do a TEDx workshop but I'm not going to give them the, any details. I'm just going to say, if TEDx is in your, on your bucket list, you will want to be on my workshop. You have 48 hours uh, to snag uh, the workshop for $37. So it wasn't like it was a 48-hour flash sale. It was 48 hours for that rate. And then I increased it to 55 And I think over 10 people jumped in. And it was an amazing way to gauge how people are actually seeing my content because how many times do you put stuff out there and you're like, no one ever saw it. They're seeing it. (laughs) They may not be engaging with it. That doesn't mean that they're not resonating with it. Uh, And if you know about my personality types, feelers, thinkers, and doers, feelers and thinkers may not be engaging in your content even if they actually enjoy it and like it. That's just the way that it is. And that's the kind of like challenge with social media, right? So anyways, it was great to see a response from my mailing list which I have adored sending emails to my mailing list because they've been so responsive. You know, one of the dreams as an online entrepreneur is to build a responsive mailing list and people that actually care. And 
it was great that lots of my sales came from a mailing list and also from social media posts. And I did a couple lives too and saying, hey, this is what you want. This is the last day to for the 37 rate. Okay, then I upped it to 55 and I still got people um, enrolling for that. And finally, yesterday, we did it. And it was really, really fun to be able to not only talk about TEDx, but talk about speaking overall. And this actually gave me so much clarity because for the last few months, I've had so many friends and mentors telling me, Marta, you're so big on visibility. I feel like you could position yourself and your messaging in a clearer way that this is what you help women with. It's PR. And this has never sounded good to me. And I think a part of me has resisted the PR because I took an amazing PR course uh, early in my business And I've been referring people to Kristen Nicholson and to Lisa Simone Richards, who were the the, uh, power duo that helped me with that. They uh, wrote, um, uh, what what is it called? Like a testimonial from my book, like they're on there. And I was like, it was almost like imposter syndrome, or maybe I don't want to compete with them. But now I know, especially after yesterday, I had this clarity that it's not so much that, it's that this is not what I'm supposed to call it. And here's why. I'm not just helping women getting out there. I'm helping them actually refine their messaging, use their authenticity, and uh, find clarity in their identity. And a lot of this has had to do with getting clear on my human design and understanding my closed centers and what people look for me for answers for, you know, um, come to me for answers for. Anyway, um, I, I, it just didn't sit well with me, but I knew I wanted to help people with, with visibility and also in making sure that they have refined offers. Because this is, this is what I've learned when I went through the media program and it worked really well for the visibility portion, not so much for conversion. And that was not the media program's fault. It was my own lack of clarity on my niche and on my offers. Once I started getting more nailed in in my message, Plus, already having built that visibility, things started to happen. And it was um, at around mid-2020 when I actually started uh, bringing in more income for my business. So this is a point that I have been hammering in and stressing over and over again in my messaging is that you can have as many eyes or as much exposure as you'd like for your business. If you don't have a clear offer or an offer that your audience wants, you're not going to convert. So what good does it do you? I mean, it's still great to build that platform for the moment when you have that offer, but let's already have an amazing offer that is validated and converting and then shout it from the rooftops. You see what I mean? So people that work with PR, they may help you with the messaging and the angle to fit a specific outlet but they're not going to give you business advice. Do you see what I mean? They're not going to tell you, you need to be clear with your niche. Um, here's how much you need to charge for your offer. Let's tweak this. Let's experiment. This is the job of a business coach, of a marketing strategist. Ta-da! This is what I do. So my messaging has been, um, or I believe my, my mission and my purpose has been getting clear around helping women with speaking. And this encompasses everything because even when you're writing a book, you're speaking, right? When you're writing content for social media, email marketing, you're speaking. When you're pitching to get on TV, when you're writing an application for TEDx, when you're um, applying for any other speaking engagements or even writing an article for a magazine, you are speaking, right? When you're giving an interview on a podcast, you are speaking. So yesterday was amazing because I had this clarity. I was like, Over and over again, women come to me and tell me, I want to be a speaker. Or over and over again, women come to me and tell me, I want to land more speaking engagements. I want to speak more. It's like they're already doing it and they want to up more. But they don't have a speaking page. They don't have a signature talk. They don't even know um, how to find speaking engagements. And when we talk about TEDx, it's a whole other beast because this is exactly what I talked about in my workshop and I taught and I have been saying what I'm teaching you about TEDx is different from everything else out, out there. And I know this because I took quite a few courses and free classes on TEDx. The majority of people tell you to go and look for TEDx's all across the U.S. and put in applications. 
and stay tuned for the deadlines and stay tuned for the guidelines and all of that. My advice for you is look for the ones that are local to you and get involved. The overwhelming majority of people that apply to TEDx have never even been to an event. This is not smart. You need to know the structure of the event, the behind the scenes, and oh my gosh, I need to freaking trademark this, a tagline that I came up with yesterday at the workshop. I said, make yourself known and make yourself useful. If you want to be featured, to be uh, recommended, right, To, to, to get referrals, make yourself known. People need to know you exist. Make yourself useful, right? And they will trust you. They will build that trust. And now looking back at my journey uh, with TEDx, this is exactly what I did. I, for a long time, when I was doing all of those courses and, you know, following the advice of, of, of sending in applications, I wasn't necessarily interested in the event itself. I had never even been to one myself. So this is why I talk with authority here. I was one of those people. I just wanted to get that under my belt. I just wanted to cross that off and say, I'm a TEDx speaker. But then after trying for a while, I did hear back. And by the way, if you're interested in hearing like the entire journey and even my experience the day of, I outline everything on episode 231. So ba- go back to episode 231. I actually had um, a few of the, of the speakers that were in my cohort listen to it and told me, oh, it was so fun to listen to you and relive that moment. So it was a really fun episode. I recorded half of it before the event and the other half afterwards. It was kind of like a reality TV of sorts. Um, so go listen to that because that was a fun one. But um, I, I think I may have shared already, and I think in that episode I probably do share, that I did get a call back uh, to audition for an event back in the day. It was in 2018 when I was going on my binge applying to all the TEDx's. But it was three hours away in Grand Juncture here in Colorado, and it was for an audition. It wasn't even for me to present. And I just had a forfeit. I decided I, I, I turned it down. I asked them if we could do it via Zoom. They said no. And it was a shame. But now looking back, it wasn't the right time. Why? I didn't have my messages clear. Now I even have my book. You know. So I've talked about all of this uh, before on that episode and probably in other episodes. But then the journey that I took was that I detached from it. I was like, let me build my business. You know, what is TEDx really going to do for me if I'm not bringing income? So let me, let me bring in some income. Let me focus on my offers and getting things straightened out. And then I got an email saying we're having a TEDx event. Would you want to volunteer? So my whole mindset towards it was different. And I honestly believe that this played in my favor so much. Why? Because I made myself useful before wanting to be recognized and picked. That's not to say that they don't pick people that they don't know and just because their application stands out. Yes. But if you're one of those people that sent out 20 plus applications, I helped a, I helped a client not too long ago that sent out over 30 applications. So it's time to try something different if that's what you've done. And if you haven't done it, just do it my way because it is the long game, but it is going to give you such a better ROI. Why? My advice for you to do it uh, locally is that you can still be stay involved even after you become a speaker. Like me, I had the opportunity of being in the selection committee. I'm still involved. I still know these people. They're local. I can go to an event. You know what I mean? So if you want more of these tips, I highly encourage you to go watch the replay. It's 55 bucks. And it was really valuable to the point where at the end of the event, I made an offer to keep up the momentum and help those ladies um, stay accountable to take the steps that I encouraged them to take on at the workshop. And two of them signed up on the spot. They were like, yes, I need this. I want to be a speaker. I know I need to up my speaking game and you're going to help me. So for the entire month of September, starting after Labor Day, because I know it's kind of like in Brazil, the year officially starts after Carnival. That's the joke that goes around. So after sometime in February or March, that's when the year starts. And I think here for the U.S., because the school year starts in the fall, life starts after Labor Day, let's be honest, right? We pack up the pools. <laughs> we accept that summer's over, and that's that. So I decided to do that. This is what I did last year with one of my group coaching programs, and it worked out really well. I was like, hey, don't worry about it. We're only starting after Labor Day, and you actually have two weeks from the here that from the day that you hear me talking about this offer to sign up and to get ready. 
So now let me move on to the portion of what the TEDx intensive is. So in case you missed the workshop and you already know you want the accountability to implement the steps because by yourself you probably won't because this is the sad truth. People take classes and courses and then they don't do the work and it doesn't help, right? I mean, it's some insight in the back of your mind for when the, the time comes for you to implement it. But if, you're, if you really know, because this is what happened to the, with the two ladies that signed up on the spot, Mandy and Nicole, they said, I already know I want this. I already know this is what I need and this is the time and I'm going to dedicate the month of September to it because it's a four-week program. So here's the twist. If you sign up for the program, you get the replay of the workshop, obviously, because I want you to see the steps that I outlined in the in the workshop and then come with me for this ride of four weeks. So the TEDx Intensive is a four-week program. We start on the 7th of September after Labor Day and we go for group calls weekly going through the steps that I outlined in the workshop, which is the first, very first week we're going to do the research. So I'm going to encourage you to look for all of the TEDx's and all other uh, local events that you can apply for, that you can understand the structure, that you can get involved, that you can attend, that you can make yourself known, make yourself useful. This is what we're going to be dedicating the week of for. And depending on who's on there, if they're local to you, you can even exchange some notes and help each other out with the, with the research. And I'll be helping out with the research as well. Week two, we're going to be focusing on your idea on the topic, right? And on applications. And this is where you can actually have a pretty good description and title of your signature talk and actually build, whether it be a media kit or a speaking page. Highly encourage you to build a speaking page. And as you get to speaking engagements, collect those photos, collect those videos to make a speaker reel. All of this elevates you as a speaker and makes people want to hire you or want to invite you to speak to them more than the other person that doesn't have something solid, right? When somebody asks, what can you talk about? And you don't have right off the bat, a copy paste. It's harder for for people to trust, right? And to know exactly how you can support their audience with your knowledge. So this is what we're doing on week two. And then three and four, we're going balls to the wall on outlining the actual talk. And I'm actually giving the first three ladies that sign up, which two spots are already taken. So there's one left, uh, a one-on-one session with me. Because in the workshop, I show you what we do in a signature talk mapping session where I help you create a title. I help you create, you know, find the story that you're going to start with in your intro, have a thesis, a clear thesis for your talk, have those three uh, development paragraphs or points that you're going to be expanding on, bringing in a story, bringing in an action step, because you really want to have people walk away from your talk and remember what, what the hell you said. Because how many times you hear somebody talking and it's like they're going around in circles and after they're done, if somebody asked you what did they talk about, you couldn't even say. That's not what you want. You want people to remember what you said. You want it to be memorable. You want them to go home and as they're sitting, eating dinner or watching a movie, they're going to remember what you said and be like, dang, I need to do this, right? Or I need to reflect on this or whatever. So this is what we're going to do for the four weeks. And I am so excited because whether you participated in the workshop or not, you're still going to be in the know and know exactly what we're doing and you're going to get the support. That's the most important thing. And this is what I'm calling it. I'm calling it TEDx intensive four weeks uh, for uh, of accountability for implementation because on your own, you may not do it. And so I'm going to help you get involved and get on stage. So if you've been wanting to really launch your speaking career or skyrocket your speaking career, this is an amazing opportunity because it is a container where everyone is going to be doing the same thing and supporting each other. <sighs> I am so excited. This is this has been so fun. I will continue to talk about it, so make sure and follow me on social media, but I will put the link in the show notes of all of my workshops, the two reels ones, the TEDx one, in case you don't want to do the intensive and you just want to get the replay of the TEDx. But just know, if you sign up for the intensive, you get the replay. So two for one, am I right? Thanks so much for tuning in today. Remember to check out the links in the show notes for the replays of the workshops. And I highly encourage you to consider the TEDx intensive. Like I said, it is focused on TEDx, but also in creating your speaking career, essentially creating your signature talks, creating your speaker page, launching this thing, blasting it off uh, to really get your message out there. Until next time. Bye.